In this video, we're going to take a look at how to automate customer or vendor onboarding inside of Business Central using Microsoft Forms and Power Automate. The great thing about this process, you can use this for so many different use cases. You can use it for Business Central, you can connect it to any other ERP system or any other connector on the Power Platform. Combining Microsoft Forms and Power Automate is an extremely powerful solution that you can use in many areas of your business. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm obsessed with maximizing Dynamics 365 with Power Platform. If you've never used Microsoft Forms before, it's a very helpful product that's included in your Microsoft Office 365 um, subscription. So you'll just find it under here under the waffles and then usually I'll go here under apps and I'll see here under forms. So I'm already here on this page and so I can go ahead and select new form. And for this one we're just going to simulate a new customer for Business Central. So we'll say new customer form. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I can easily add these different types of questions. Now, an important part of this will be to add the information on this form that we need to collect for a new customer inside of Business Central. So that's usually going to be things like customer name, address, email, website. And if you have any questions, you can always go to the system that you're using in our case We'll just go ahead and start creating our form now. So what's nice about forms is it also uses AI. So we see, as you can see here, as it says for new customer form, it suggests that maybe we want to. Okay, here we have added seven different items. So we'll go ahead and hit add that. So as we can see here, it actually was really great. It went ahead and filled out a lot of information that we need already. From here, we can actually choose to style it if we desire. As you can see here, there is some nice um, graphics available as well for you to go ahead and easily format your form into one of the um, choices that are already available, one of the templates, or you can also come into here and if I hit the plus button, it will allow you to upload an image um, and select your color theme as well. So you can really customize this form to be whatever it is that you need it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and do this fun little one for right now. Now, another important thing to look at is whenever you're collecting your responses, you always want to make sure that if this form needs to be external, which for customer onboarding it does, make sure you, sure you go ahead and select that anyone can respond to selection. Then as you can see here, we also have a couple different ways that your customer can get this information. We have a link, we can actually send it from email in here, but that's not really going to be helpful to what we want or what I'm going to use in this scenario. Um, you can also use a QR form, I use this all the time. Or you also have an iframe if you want to share that iframe somewhere. So this will be important to take a look at here shortly whenever we want to actually collect our information. So I'm actually going to go ahead and update the name of this to be new customer from YouTube just because I've got a lot of forms it'll make it easier for us to identify here shortly. Now that we have our form we can take a look at it see we'll be able to start this here shortly. So let's go ahead and create a new flow. First what we're going to do is we're going to create an automated flow because we want our flow to trigger whenever a new response is generated. So we'll call this flow YouTube customer and whenever a new response is submitted. Now what we'll have here is we have a drop down where we can select the name of our form. For some reason, if the name of your form isn't here, then what you can do is add a custom value and then enter the form ID of the form that you just created. But I do believe ours is here. New customer from YouTube. And then we're going to go ahead and add another action. We'll type in forms. And we're going to go ahead and get the response details. Now, once again, we will go ahead and get the new customer from YouTube video. And then we will select the list of response notifications response ID. Now, what we can see here is it did put this and apply to each loop first because what it says is, hey, I will go ahead and I will get a response for every 
form response that was submitted, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're going to get our actions from within the supply to each loop. Otherwise, the information that we want to get is going to be empty. So what we're going to do within the supply to each loop, we're going to go ahead and add another action. And we'll do this one for Business Central. We could make this more complex, but we'll keep this nice and easy for now. And we're just going to select this one called Create a Record. And then what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to do is rename this. So I'll say create customer from YouTube and I will select the environment, the company. And then go ahead and also select the V2 API because in this scenario, we're just going to use the standard information. And then I will select my customer from right up here. Now what this is going to do is I can actually select the parameters that I want to see, or I can do all of them or just select a um, few of them. So let's just go ahead in here and plug in some of these with my dynamic content. That will be the little lightning bolt. If I type in address, just fill in some of this information here quickly. Great, now that I have all the information that I want to, um, I have populated from the form. So basically this will populate the customer inside of Business Central. Let's go ahead and save this. So this is there for us to test this. We actually have to fill out this form. So let's go ahead and fill. So let me type in Mary test. I'll type in this test at email.com. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and see how our flow worked. If I hit back here, this will bring me back to the designer experience and I'll hit got it. Great, our flow ran, it works. Let's take a look at it. First, we'll take a look at the back side, then we'll take a look to see what happened inside of Business Central. So what we can see here is we have our information. This is our inputs. This is our outputs. Essentially, it's not that much for whenever this happens. It's really just going to give us the form ID and response because what we see is we see all this here and our output. So again, if I select show raw output, this is going to give me a cleaner response of essentially all the information that I filled out. This is going to be the information that is passed down into the next step into the form that we are into the customer card that we created. If you've been working with the connector for a minute, you will see that this is different. I definitely don't like that instead of giving the nice name of what this is supposed to be. It just has some jibber jabber as far as the output. So maybe we can work with Microsoft to get that improved. If I look at the customer information, we can see here, right, all the information that was transferred down from our previous steps. So all of this looks really great. Now let's take a look inside of get our new customers here inside of Business Central. What we do see here down here is we see Mary Test and we see the information in our customer card that I populated in our test email. So as you can see, it's very easy to create the Microsoft form and use Power Automate to create a new record with inside of Business Central or any other third party system. We did this for customer, but I've seen this done for customer, vendor, employee. We even done it is, um, for things such as items as well. Make sure you like and save this video so you can stay up to date with all of our other videos coming out. Let's navigate over to Power Automate to get our flow going.